Hey friends, I'm Tasia, and these are the 10 best iOS 14 features. <music> iOS 14 is finally out of the beta stage and available for everybody. So I'm breaking down the top 10 iOS 14 features. But first are two pro tips for you. Tip number one, always, 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 back up and sync your device prior to installing any software updates. This is a must. Do not install a software update without first backing up and syncing your device. And tip number two, I recommend waiting until there's a minor version update prior to installing any brand new OS update. And here's what I mean by that. So we're at iOS 14 now. This is like the first go with this major update. But you remember when we were at 13 and you'd see numbers like 13.6.1, for example. Without getting into all the details of the numbers mean, 13 would be the major version update. Six would be a minor update. So that means iOS 13 in this example was updated about six times. So what you wanna think about is there's always bugs when there's a big major update. And what Apple does is they do these minor version fixes to fix some of the bugs and the hiccups. So you may wanna wait until maybe there's 14.1 before you download iOS 14. So let's get into the best iOS 14 features. So be sure to watch to the end for a couple of honorable mentions. But first up is the all new home screen with the app library. That's right, Apple has finally updated the home screen. You can access your shiny new app library right with one swipe left past your home screen. Now, this is where all your apps live and are automatically categorized for you. Plus this means you can completely remove apps from your home screens, but they're gonna remain organized in your app library. And if you have a ton of home screens, you can get rid of entire screens too without losing your apps. I think of my app library like storage for a seasonal wardrobe. So think about apps that you don't use very often, um, but you wanna access from time to time. So for example, I can remove less used apps from my home screens in order to clean them up, but I know these apps are tucked away right here in my app library should I need them. Just like my favorite sweater when I need it in the fall. Second on the list is picture in picture. That's right, it's not just for iPad anymore. Now when you're watching a video or chatting on FaceTime, you can swipe back to your home screen and your video is going to keep playing in a little box. So you can continue on with other tasks while your video is still there on your screen. And of course you can move the video box around two on your screen or just swipe it to the side where the box is gonna become a tab, but you're still gonna hear the audio. Pretty neat. Moving on to number three, the messages updates. And there are a few here and I'm very excited about them because messages is probably my most used app on iPhone. So now you can pin up to nine conversations, which is gonna move them and keep them at the top of your messages stack. Now this is super useful if like me, you have a ton of group conversations on the go. And speaking of group convos, those have also gotten a much needed facelift as well. You can finally reply to a message in line. So kind of like Skype or WhatsApp lets you do. So it's easier to know what you're replying directly to. And you can also at mention someone in messages. So now you know the message is directed towards them specifically. Plus, you can even adjust your settings to only notify you when you want to be mentioned. So that's really good for group chats. If you don't wanna be bombarded with all the notifications of a group chat, set it to only notify you when you're mentioned. Other noticeable differences in group messages are that you'll see images of everyone who's in the group with the most recent people first, and you can give your group its own image too, just like you can with a name. 
This brings me to number four on the list, the all new emoji search bar. So remember how before you'd have to type out a word and then pick the emoji from inside your compose window or scroll through a ton of emoji at the bottom just to find the one you need. Not anymore. The emoji picker now has a search bar of its own, just like Mac. Hallelujah. All right, number five on the list is changing your default browser and email app. Because if you're anything like me, you're just a Google girl living in an Apple world or something like that. So you can finally designate third-party apps to be your default browser and email apps. And once you do this, it's found in your settings. When you click on a link or email address, it's gonna open in the app of your choosing. Woohoo! No more Safari automatically opening links for me. Okay, now let's move on to a couple of iOS 14 accessibility features because they're super important. There are now all new back tap features. And if you're keeping track, this is number six on the list. So it's found under touch in your accessibility settings and just ensure that right here, back tap is toggled on. Now you can customize whether you want a double tap or a triple tap or both and what action you wanna take upon those taps. So as an example, I've set the control center here as my double tap action, but you can set any accessibility shortcut or scroll through gestures and other shortcuts too. So now I just, boom, double tap the back of my phone at any time and my control center automatically appears. So another great accessibility feature is number seven on my list, and that's the sound recognition feature. And I know what you're gonna say to me, I don't want my phone listening to me the whole time. I get it, but I think this is a really important accessibility feature and here's why. This is another one that's found in your accessibility features like I mentioned. With sound recognition toggled on, your phone is gonna notify you of important sounds around you. So you can adjust which sounds you want it to listen for as well. And the importance here is that you can set your phone to notify you of, say, a fire alarm going off, for example. Obviously, you'd never solely rely on this sound recognition feature, but I think it could be really useful in conjunction with other accessibility features around the home. All right, the last three iOS 14 features all revolve around voice and camera tools. So let's start with voice. Number eight is the ability to enhance voice recordings in iOS 14. So do you ever use the voice memo app? I use it quite a lot actually. And it's always been pretty good. Basic standard iPhone app for capturing voice recordings. But now with iOS 14, there's a new magic wand in your editing options. And this wand helps clean up the background noise on a recording. It's not perfect, of course, but it's a nice little extra feature for times when you need to record a memo in a pinch. All right, number nine on the list are a ton of camera improvements. Now, if you already have an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 11 Pro, you're gonna have some of these features already, but all you other iPhone users, listen up iPhone 10R and 10S users now also have the option to enjoy quick take video mode. It's the same mode that iPhone 11 and 11 Pro users have been enjoying. So now you can press and hold the shutter button in photo mode to take a video. And all iPhone users can now change both the video resolution and frame rate directly from here in your camera app like the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro can. No more fussing around in your settings. This option can be toggled on in your video recording settings. And last but not least on the list, Instagram influencers, you better be listening. You can now join the ranks of iPhone 11 and 11 Pro users in unmirroring your selfies. It's true. So in your camera settings, Enable the mirror front camera option. This sounds like it's opposite to what you want, but it's actually gonna end up unmirroring your final image or video. So in other words, 
It's gonna look backwards to you when you're taking a photo or video, but it's going to appear the right way around in your saved photo or video. Now you can hold up all the inspirational quotes or promotional products your heart desires and they'll no longer be backwards to the viewer. So here I am taking what could be an Insta story and look, I'm gonna hold up a random product or maybe you'll see the writing on my shirt looks backwards to me here in my viewfinder. But watch what's gonna happen when I stop recording and I go to my photos app. Blammo! Everything in this video is exactly as it should be. Nothing is backwards or mirrored in the final product. So as promised, I have two honorable mentions here. And the first are the new widgets on the today screen. That's the screen to the left of your first home screen. It's accessed via a swipe right. So there are new widgets here, but they can be dragged off of this today screen and onto your home screen for even quicker access. The second honorable mention here is that there have been a ton of improvements to Siri. Now there are far too many for me to go into detail here, but if you'd like to know more about those, let me know in the comments below and I'll make another video on it for you. As well with the comments below, I've been sure to add all of the devices that will work and run iOS 14. Basically, if your device can run iOS 13, it'll be able to run 14. So that's right down to the iPhone SE up through the 12 models. So those are my picks for the top 10 iOS 14 features. And now I want to hear from you. What are some of your favorite iOS 14 features and why? Let everybody know in the comments below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, I wanna know. So give it a like, a share, or leave that comment below. You can click right about here to subscribe to my channel and here and here for even more videos. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you next time.